Wow, I'm still having the excitement and hype for the upcoming Crash Bandicoot 4. The announcement was amazing, the trailer looked great, and the gameplay looks spectacular. And in this video, just like the title says, we're gonna go through 20 different things that is simply amazing, taken from the official trailer and the gameplay. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. So before we begin in a few seconds, comment of the day. Since I've actually skipped a few due to the crazy happenings around lately, I've chosen not one, not two, but five comment of the days. Thank you for commenting on my recent video guys, and of course, congratulations for getting the comment of the day. Alright, now with that out of the way, sit tight, relax, and here are 20 amazing things you should know about Crash Bandicoot 4 based on the trailer and gameplay announcement. Do let me know your thoughts as well down in the comment section below on what you think of the new game. Starting off from number 1, character designs. Once you've watched the trailer, you will notice immediately that the aesthetic and the overall design and the looks of our favourite characters have been changed. For some people, this might take some getting used to, especially for Coco. I see that a lot of people find her new looks, um, well I'm just gonna say interesting. However, for me, I find that the new slick and solid design is really good compared to Ensign Trilogy and the recent Crash Team Racing. So yeah, you might love it, you might hate it, but in the end, I'm just glad that our favourite Bandicoot is finally back in action. Number 2, The Story so basically it's about time travel and the multiverse. The gist of it is that Cortex, Entropy and Uka Uka had been banished back in time, but have emerged again once more and torn a rift in the fabric of the multiverse. In order to restore balance, the four newly announced masks, also known as the Quantum Mask, have to be reunited and that is where Crash and Coco comes in. So throughout the journey, our heroes aka the Bandicoots will bear the true space and time in order to reunite all the masks and restore balance once more. So yeah, that's a summary of it. I find this really exciting that they are playing around with the concept of time travel because who knows what other surprises they have in store for us. Speaking of surprises, there is a hint that a certain character that we are also familiar about might be appearing in the game and we know who exactly that is. I will let you know who that is in just a minute. Number 3, the timeline. So just in case you're wondering where does the storyline pick up from, Crash Bandicoot 4 is about time will be set after the events of Crash 3, in other words, Crash Warped. And this is why you will see Uka Uka, Cortex and Entropy in this series. Number 4, now we will dive into the gameplay side of things, starting with the animation. So as you can see from the trailer and the gameplay, the animation looks far more different compared to the Ensign Trilogy. Over here, it feels much more instant and twitchy compared to the Ensign Trilogy animation which looks smooth and fluid. Obviously this isn't a big issue but I can foresee during my first few playthrough, it might take some time getting used to. Number 5, the levels. Now during the release trailer announcement livestream, the devs have said that they are going to focus on a more linear style Crash Bandicoot level compared to the Spiral Reignited Trilogy, which are much more open-ended. I think this is actually a good idea as I want the next installment to feel just right at home in the Bandicoot journey. Now, new maneuvers. Now, I'm sure that most of you already know based on the trailer and the gameplay review, Crash is able to do many many things to maneuver around the map, such as rope gliding, wall running, zero gravity movement, rope swinging and probably a few more that we haven't actually seen yet. I'm really excited for this one because just by watching the gameplay alone, you can feel that this is gonna be so much fun. Number 7, the announced stages and maps. So far we only have a few maps announced, first of which is the forest area design. The next one kinda looks like the outside of Cortex Castle with the giant end in front of it. Following that is the water sliding level which actually looks a ton of fun. Further into the trailer, you can see a level with tons of futuristic buildings and vehicles. I know it's not true, but I kinda wanna think that this is Electron Avenue but in daytime. Next we have a Japanese team stage with a green dragon flying over it, which again looks pretty neat. Right after that, that is what I like to think of a back alleyway sort of level. And then moving on a underwater level. I don't know, is Crash gonna be given a diving suit? We just have to wait and see. Now this one, my personal favorite, a dinosaur chase scene which obviously comes from the past. There are lavas everywhere, the lighting is great, Crash is having fun right there, what's not to love about this? And then of course we can't forget about many other areas that were shown as well. All of them look spectacular and I can't wait to play through each and every one of them. So moving on, we have the bosses. Currently we don't have much footage of bosses right now, but the trailer did show us a glimpse at one of them, being our lovely Dr. Engine. Now if you don't know, it's pretty cool that this boss fight is a reference to Guitar Hero. 
Another one which I'm not sure if it's a boss fight or not, or it could be a chasing sequence, this massive ghost behind Crash. You have to admit, this scene is actually pretty dope. Moving on to number 9, more info on returning villains and characters. So yes, more of our favourite Crash Universe villains will be making a comeback in this game. But what's even more amazing is that it is confirmed that you will be able to play as one of them, which is none other than Dr. Neo Cortex himself. Now, while we are able to switch between Crash and Coco at any part of the journey, there are specific levels where you can play as Cortex himself. Based on what we know so far, the double jump from Crash and Coco will be replaced with a forward dash for Cortex. Not only that, Cortex have some sort of transmuter gun, which is able to transform monsters into platforms which he can use to his advantage. That is all we know about that so far, but the dash has confirmed that we will be able to control more characters other than the ones that I've mentioned. Number 10, Phalloxide. I'm sorry, I just want to have a laugh at this because I find this really amusing. Well of course, that is a Nitro Oxide himself but instead it could be one of the Gasmoxian species from the Gasmoxian galaxy. Based on the screenshot, Crash is doing his new anti-gravity power on this level, which I strongly believe that this level takes place in a distant universe. Overall, I think that it's great that we get to see this fabulous screenshot. Now speaking of Crash using a new power, the 4 new masks also known as the Quantum Mask will be able to provide Crash new powers throughout his journeys. So far only 2 mask powers are revealed, one of which is the Time Mask known as Capuluna. While in possession, Crash is able to manipulate time. We can see him doing this by slowing down falling objects and obstacles around him. It was also mentioned by the developers that even Nitro crates can be time stopped. So Crash can actually jump onto a Nitro crate while time is actually slowed down without the Nitro exploding in his face instantly. The second mask power that was reviewed to us was the Gravity Mask, named as Ika Ika. Ika Ika is able to bestow Crash the power of gravity manipulation which in turn allows him to walk on ceilings, run on walls, etc. There is actually one more mask that were revealed at the end of the trailer, but its powers wasn't shown. So I guess we just have to wait and see. Number 12. Now I actually felt that this deserved the number of its own because I feel how cool and quirky it is. Whenever Crash obtains a quantum mask and is ready to use its powers, Crash wears a bodysuit and the design depends on what mask he's using. I find this personally really funny and it just makes Crash look so much more goofy. Number 13, Multiple Choices. With what we discussed earlier on mask power, it is pretty clear that from a trailer and the gameplay that we are able to tackle stages in multiple ways. Such as the gameplay on screen right now, you can see that with the gravity mask, you have the choice to go either on the ground or walk on the roof. Who knows what other choices or path we can take with the two other mask powers that weren't revealed yet. Imagine the possibilities of how one stage can be played multiple ways and I simply love it. Now number 14 is where the juicy part comes in, different game modes. Now there are two game modes that are coming to the game, which are retro mode and modern mode. Based on what these two modes are all about, there is something for everybody. Firstly the modern mode. Now modern mode basically is a new type of mode in Crash Bandicoot 4, whereby you have unlimited lives, no hard reset which means going back to checkpoints every time when you die. However the catch is that you are only able to die a set amount of times until you are unable to collect the clear gem. They do this to encourage players to try and beat the game with at least a little bit of effort. We know nothing more about the game mode yet aside from what we heard from the death interview. The second game mode which is the retro mode is basically your Crash Bandicoot goodness with the usual life system. Personally I'm gonna definitely play on retro mode just because I like a little bit of challenge on the line. Number 15 is a feature different from the Ensign Trilogy, whereby if you hit a crate, the Wompa fruit immediately magnets onto you. Now I'm not entirely sure if this exists in the previous game as I didn't play them all, but from playing the Ensign Trilogy alone, I think that this is a very welcoming feature. Correct me if I'm wrong and let me know down in the comment section below of what you think. 16. Time Trial Hints Now I didn't catch this myself, but a member of my Discord server, 4K, had notified me that there's a time trial clock at the level. This goes to show that there will be time trial challenges coming back and we might even see more of what we don't know yet. Oh and if you're wondering, yes there will be jam portals as well. 17. When you buy the game digitally, you will get the totally tabular skins. Now I don't personally get digital copies mainly because I like to keep my games physical, just so that I can feel that I actually own it. But if you're a big fan of some extra cosmetics, I would say just go for it. And we're almost at the end of the list. Once again, the trailer showed that the game will be releasing on the PS5 and the Xbox. 
for the PC and Nintendo Switch release however, no sign of it being announced yet so we might just have to wait and see. Number 19, the release date. Based on previous leaks before the announcement, it was mentioned that the release date is supposed to be on October 9, but clearly that is not the case for the newly announced trailer that we are also familiar with, which says that the release date is instead on October 2nd. So I'm not sure what's exactly going on here, it might be a typo or they might be bringing over the game forward a week earlier. But crossing my fingers and hoping that it is indeed coming on October 2nd. And finally, number 20, I've mentioned before that the developers have hinted a certain character that will be making an appearance in the game. And it is none other than Spyro. Now, it is not a 100% chance that it will happen, but when Canadian guy asked the developer of Crash 4, they simply replied with, there's absolutely a chance for that. Wow, simply wow. So that is all for the amazing things that we are expecting for the Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time. Let me know down in the comment section below which one is your favourite and why. I will be updating you guys again if any more crazy Crash related news comes up, so remember to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. This is the Vaporian signing off, thanks for watching again and I'll see you guys in the next video.